Hello and welcome to the new lesson on Azure Technical Skills. In this lesson, we will briefly talk about what is a virtual machine and how we can create virtual machines in Azure. Visualization of a machine is actually the abstraction of the underlying physical hardware in which we can dedicate some part of the hardware like RAM, CPU and hard disk etc. The reason for such abstraction is to run multiple applications with conflicting needs and dependencies on the same machine but in a segregated way. A simple example would be to assume an application that requires let's say Linux operating system okay but we have Windows operating system and for some reason switching entirely to a Linux system is not an option. In that case the concept of virtual machine comes into rescue. What we can do is we can create a virtual machine and install Linux operating system on it along with all the dependencies and package required for the application along with the application itself. So that was a bit of a theory. Now let's go to the portal and see how we can create virtual machines in Azure. So here I am at my Azure portal and I'll select this option which says virtual machines. And as I have no virtual machine previously configured in my subscription, so I'll have to add a new one. So I'll click on this add button. And then in here I can see two options. Okay, one is the virtual machine and the second one is start with the preset configuration. Okay, now as the name says, if I click this option, I'm presented with all the preset configurations. Okay, so one of them is for development and testing. One of them is for production and then general purpose optimized. Okay, you can see the specifications of these virtual machines as well. Okay, so if I need something as high as 14 GB four core CPU, I can select this one. But for now, I'm not going to use the preset configuration. I'm going to be creating my own custom virtual machine. So I'll select the first option, which is add a virtual machine. And then I can select the resource type, resource group, sorry, which is labs underscore header. And then the name of the virtual machine, let's call it VM1. Okay. In the production environment, you shouldn't be using this type of naming convention. Okay. The name of the virtual machines, the name of the server should actually mean something. Okay. So the region, let's leave it as East US. Now let's explore this option. What does it tell us? <clears throat> now the first option that is available for me is the availability zone. Okay. It says that physically separate your resources within an Azure region. Okay. So Azure, in, in Azure, we have regions. Okay. And then within regions, we have availability zones. Avail availability zone is nothing but a separate data center within a, within a region. Okay. So if I select this option, this means that my virtual machine will be replicated across multiple zones, multiple availability zones or multiple data centers. So if one of the data centers goes down, my virtual machine would still be up and running and my application would still be up and running. Okay. Now, unfortunately, in my current subscription, this option is grayed out for me. So I'm going to skip that. Now, the last option that I have is the availability set. What does it say? Automatically distribute your VM across multiple fault domains. Okay. Now, fault domain, you can just consider it as a physical rack. Okay. In which we have multiple servers and all of these servers within a single rack, they share the same power source. Okay. So if I do that, our, my virtual machine will be replicated across multiple racks or multiple fault domains. Okay. So if one of the, if I do not select this option, if one of the rack goes down, if one of the fault domain goes down, there's some problem. My virtual machine will go down as well. Okay. Now the next option I have to select the source image. Okay. So if I click on see all the sizes, sorry, it's not the source image. It's actually the, the, conf the, the configuration of the virtual machine. Okay. So in here I can see all the configuration. I can select the, the, uh, the virtual machine for my virtual core CPUs. I can select the RAM. I can select the data disk. Then I can select the disk with the input output operations. Okay. So for something transactional, I would need higher, uh, my higher IOPS uh, disk. Okay. And with that, I might also use premium disk. Okay. But for the sake of demonstration, I'll, I'll be using something as simple as this one. And the estimated cost of this, if this configuration is around seven point five zero dollars, okay. But remember that this cost should is not is not the actual cost that you're going to be charged at the end of the month, okay? Because along with the virtual machines, you have other resources like uh, public IP address sometimes, and along with that, you have disks as well, okay? So we're going to discuss that later. But for now, I'm going to select this option. Now. The next option that I have to uh, choose is the authentication type. Okay. I can either choose password 
or I can either choose the SS, SSH public key pair. Now, in order to connect to the Linux machines, we often use SSH key pairs, okay? So, I'll select the first option, and then in here it tells me the default uh, username, okay? So, I'll leave it as it is. And then the next option, it tells me either I can generate a new key pair, or I can either use my own key pair, okay? So, for now, I'll let the Azure generate a new key pair for me. And the name of the key pair, key pair, let's say, I'll call it key one. Okay. And then the next option, it tells me about the ports. Okay. So the public inbound ports option in this, I will have to, I'll have to leave the SSH 22 number port open. Okay. The reason why I'm opening this port on this virtual machine is that I'm using the SSH protocol to connect to this virtual machine, okay? And the SSH protocol works on port number 22. So if this port is not selected in here, I won't be able to connect to it, okay? Next, I go to the disk section. And then th from this option, I will just select the standard HDD. I do not need anything fancy like standard SSD or premium SSD, okay? And then the encryption type, I do not need any special kind of encryption, so I'll leave it as default. And then in here, it tells me it gives me the option if I, if I want to create and uh, attach the new disk with the virtual machine that I'm going to create I will not be using that for now and then under the advanced section I have these two options the first one is use managed disk okay so the managed disk is created at the time of the virtual machine creation and then it is automatically mounted to the virtual machine okay so if I uncheck this option then it tells me to go ahead and create a new storage account and th from that uh, storage account I'll have to mount uh, I'll have to create some new blob or, fi or file share and then mount it to the virtual machine itself okay so I'll not be using that option as well now the last option that I have is eFermal operating system disk okay now in this case no disk no separate disk will be created or no storage account will be created but for disk space the cache of the virtual machine itself will be used okay so, but it tells me that the selected image is too large for the operating system cache of the selected instance, okay? So, yes, I'll go ahead to the networking section. And then under the virtual network, I will select a virtual network. If there is no virtual network over here, I'll have to create a new one. And then I will select the default subnet, okay? And then the public IP, okay? So, if I, I have two options here, by the way. If I select none, this means that my virtual machine will do does not have will not have any public endpoint. Okay, so it will not be able to connect to the outside world. Okay, or the public IP address. But in my case, I'll be using the public IP address, so I'll leave it as it is. And then the network security group we have talked about it in one of our lessons. Okay, so I'll just select the basic ones. And then once again, I have the public inbound ports option. Okay, so if I select none then none of the in none of the ports will be none of the inbound traffic will be allowed okay so if i allow only selected por ports it tells me to select the the few ports that i want to open for the inbound traffic now obviously i'm going to be needing this ssh port okay so as we have talked about it earlier now i do not need uh, since we, do, we have not talked about any load balancing, balancing solution yet so i'll be skipping these options okay and i'll directly go to the management section Okay, so boot diagnostics, I do not need any. I'll disable this option, okay? And then the rest of the options, we have not talked about them as well. So we'll just we'll just be skipping them for now. And then in here, it tells me to enable auto shutdown. And if I check this, it, it gives me the option to select the time at which I want my virtual machine to shut down automatically, okay? So I'll be not be using this option. And I do not need any backup for now. And then here it talks about the updates, okay? So yes, I'll leave this option for default. And then I'll go to the advanced section. Okay, so all is said here, let's go to the advanced section. And then in here, I have the first option that I have is that of extensions, okay? So if I want my virtual machine to have some pre-configured extensions, I'll select this option, okay? So if I select this option, I have many, many extensions that I can configure, okay? But for now, I'll not be using any of these extensions, okay? I'll just go to the next option, which is custom data and cloud in it, okay? So this is a very useful option because this allows us to pass on certain commands. Let's say you are configuring Apache server, okay, which we'll talk about in one of our upcoming videos. 
let's say you're configuring a web server and you want to it pre-configured by the time the VM launches okay so in here you can provide your installation script installation and configuration script and that will be passed on to the virtual machine and by the time it launches you'll be able to see the effects of the scripts in your virtual machine okay so the next option that I have is the host group okay so the host group uh, is a logical grouping of our virtual machines okay so this helps me to select this option which is the next option which says proximity placement group okay so if I want my virtual machines to be to be located not for not very far because of the latency purposes I will be creating I'll be using these options okay for now I will not we have not talked much about these host groups okay so I'll be skipping these options as well and in here it tells me the VM generation you can if you want you if you're interested you can read about the generation in here for me VM generation 1 is okay next I go to the tag section and what I what I do is I I give it a tag I give it a tag name owner and the value let's say value is header now you can use your own tags okay tags are important because if someone comes if someone logs into the subscription and someone sees this virtual machines and he's confused about like who created this machine what is the purpose of this machine okay so with the use of tags it will be easy for him to understand that okay it was created by me and let's say I can add another tag which is the purpose of this virtual machine so let's say in purpose I type in training so now if anyone looks at this virtual machine by the by looking at the tags of this virtual machines he can know that okay this virtual machine was created by Heather for training purposes okay but you you can use your own conventions okay that depends upon your organizations next I click review and create now in this section I'll be I'll be able to just review all the configuration configurations and the preset configuration if I've selected any I'll be able to view them in here and I'm okay with these settings so I'll just click on create button And then in here it tells me to download the private key and uh, private key and create a resource okay now the reason why I'm having this pop-up is because at the time of virtual machine creation if you remember I asked the Azure itself to create the key pair for me because we are using the SSH method to connect to our Linux instance which we'll see in a while so that's why I'll download this uh, uh, private key and this will be downloaded in a while okay so I'll get back to you once it is all done okay now that my virtual machine is up and running and I've also downloaded my private public key pair the next thing that I want is to have a program installed which is the, the name of the program is putty okay I'll be using the program called putty to connect to my Linux instance okay via SSH method so I will go to my program putty now you can easily download and install it via Google okay you just type in putty and uh, putty download and then you can download the program for Windows uh, using any of the provided link okay so the first thing that I need to do is to launch my putty gen okay now before that I want to I want you to note something the public private key pair that I downloaded a while ago is in the dot pm extension okay now in order to connect to my Linux instance I have to use the dot ppk extension okay so the first thing that I'll be doing is I'll be converting this file to a p dot ppk file okay so I launch my putty gen first and then make sure you do not mess with any of these settings okay just simply click on the load button and go to the download folder select all files and then select the key that you downloaded which is in the dot pem extension okay just open it and in here just provide any password okay so pass one two three four five okay pass one two three four five I have provided the key phrase or the password now I will simply click on save private key and then save it by any name let's say the name of the key would be uh, KKJ okay and then I'll click save I can just close this window and if I go to my download folder I can say the I can see the PPK file created okay so now I will launch putty not putty gen okay this time I'll be launching putty I'll click on it and the first thing that I need to provide is the host or the IP address okay so in this case I'll be using the 
public IP address. Now I hope you already know at this point why am I not using the private IP address because from the previous labs you know that I have not created any VPN configuration okay for this virtual network so private IP address will not work okay so I'll be using the public IP address and then I will paste it here now by default the SSH protocol is selected which is exactly what we need and the port is 22 which is fine now the next thing that I will do is I will go to the SSH section okay I'll expand it and then I'll select this authentication option okay and then in this text field in this browse field I will browse my PPK extension file okay which is this one so I'll click open and then simply click open okay so now it's asking me for the username so I'll just provide the default username which was provided by Azure itself at the time of uh, VM creation so the username was Azure user I believe okay yes it was correct so now I'll provide the passphrase which I created a while ago and in here as you can see I have I've been logged in into the terminal of my Linux instance okay now we can do all the Linux things in here okay because I'm already logged into my Linux instance now but for this video that's it and this is how we can connect to our Linux instances okay using putty gen and putty okay so that's it for now and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching